Lane Gray here, Plaster of Beginners, and today we're going to be looking at doing another Artex ceiling. This time with bonding, and then we're going to do other stuff. That's for later. Okay, so what we're looking at here, we've got a textured ceiling. We've got a lovely little line ripple through. And the best way we're going to deal with this, it's quite thick, you don't actually want to scrape it, it's just going to bond over the whole lot. So we've got that, we've got the other side, and then we've got a feather into an existing plasterboard. This is the Room of Doom. We're also going to probably do some plastering in here, get some lights in. But for now, I'm going to deal with this. So we're going to bond it out, I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with it. Look, my mate's made me a brew as well. Christ, early doors. Look after you. Look at that. Lovely. Right, okay, as stated, we're gonna bond this ceiling. And what I'm gonna use, because it is such a small area, I'm gonna try this stuff. It's called Half Time. The same guys that did Extra Time, but this is Half Time for bonding. I've never actually used this before. This is the first time I'm gonna test it out with you. So let's have a little look at it. Half Time. And the instructions state, you won't be able to read that, but basically it's seven litres of water for pink plaster or five litres of water for grey plaster and just approximately half a bag of bonding. So I've got about a third of bags worth here. I've got this bit to do, a few bits around there. So what you do, I'm going to roughly put, I'm going to put under a bag in. Like I said, I don't know how aggressive it is. I don't know how fast it's going to set. I've never used it. So, it doesn't taste nice. So you sprinkle it in the water first. I've just put under a bag in. Got a little bit left. Scrap it. It's going in. Put it in the water, and then you give it a little mix first. Actually did it wrong for the extra time video. Plaster a retardant and it's designed to give you more time with your mix and your plastering. This is how you should do it. So I'll give it a good mix up. I'm going to do is plug my mixer in, get the bonding in, and then I'm going to show you how I cover this. So let's get mixing. Right, so, process simple, got the bonding. What I'm gonna do is do a tight coat just to cover the texture. It's actually a sloped ceiling, it's all over the place. Very old house, You've probably seen it in some of the old videos. So, I'm just gonna do a tight coat. I don't know how long we've got on this stuff, because I've never used it, so I'm gonna have to be pretty fast. But it's simple enough. Put it on. What we're doing, just trying to cover that texture. It's actually a bit where there's a bit of a gap between the wall and the ceiling. And we actually did the walls first because we have to do under the stairway. So, unfortunately, it wasn't ready for the ceiling when we did it. So what happens is you're going to have to put, it's going to have to put a bit of cork around the edges because if you don't tie the ceiling into the walls, it will crack. So that will crack between there. But warned him, we've had to put some, we'll have to put some cork on.
So the quick side note, this half time bonding is good stuff. It's setting, but it's nice. So if you want to brush on, it's quite good. You would usually use a speed skim or a straight edge flattening this out, but the ceilings are so out of shape that in this particular instance, it's not going to be worth it. But if you were to use it, just use it to quickly flatten off and then it would get you the flatter ceiling. But in this instance, they're so out that it won't be worth doing. So yeah, I'll crack on. Gone. It's been about five minutes. That's me done. Completely gone off. So now I've got to clean it. There's a good bit. Completely solid. The fun bit. Here's a tip. Never mix bonding in your good bucket because it's a nightmare to clean out. So here's a good tip for you. If you are going to do any bonding work, back in plaster, use a separate bucket like a little gorilla tub which you can knock out because this will mess up your plastering bucket. You know, I mean, I should know this. I should know better, but I didn't. So learn from my lessons. Right, so that's that. And we've learned three things here. Never use a decent bucket for bonding. Listen to instructions. Follow what it says on a packet. Because that went off in about four minutes. <laughs> Spent me four minutes to put it on and 15 minutes clean up the tools and bucket. And uh, rule number three is I'm gonna quickly go over the uses of bonding over an Artex scene like that. I mean, it potentially might not be an Artex, but the reason is in the previous video, I actually scraped the Artex down, just plastered over it. And uh, rightly so in the comments, you said you're actually exposing yourself to potential asbestos getting into the air. So to be fair, hands up, it's probably one of the best thing to do. So in this situation, the safest thing to do is actually go over it with a coat of bonding like this. And then you're not affecting any, any potential hazards. Um, you're covering it up and then you're going over it again. So that is probably the safest way of doing it. So as you can see, it's bonded. We've got it nice and flat. I'll give you a little look. Well, not flat, it's all over the place, but you see a tight coat, we've covered the high spots and we've leveled into that, to that ceiling there. I've got a bit of a curve going down. It's a very old house, as you can see, compared to the door. The ceiling's everywhere. So usually you could use a speed skin to flatten it out, but if you're doing a, a tight coat, you can get it pretty flat anyway. Um, but in this instance, it wasn't right. But like I said, I always try and do ceilings first because now, we didn't do the two together, that edge will crack. There will be movement, it will move. I did explain that to the customer, but he said we haven't got time. He wasn't ready for the spotlights, the electrics went in, and he just wanted that done. So what you do is when you've skimmed it, cork along that edge, and then you should be okay. So that's it. That's bonded out, and it is dry. That half time, was a really good product, I actually really rate it. But listen to the instructions because it's very aggressive. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do, you'll have to do this. You could probably, if you wanted, go straight onto that with your multi-finish, two coats, and you can get it going. What I like to do is actually put a nice, neat coat of PVA on it. Um, that helps to get rid of any high spots. And for me, I just like to always add a bit of PVA in because it stops the bubbles appearing from your multi-finish, it helps to reduce it. I'll go into that in a minute when I start plastering it. So I'll PVA it and then we'll crack on. And there's one brand that I particularly like. In my eyes, they're all getting a bit weaker. So this stuff, the Evo Stick 5-in-1, this is a grand old product. Really, really concentrated PVA glue. And it will go further than most. So that's what we're going to use today. I'm going to go 3-to-1 with this stuff. That'll definitely be enough. It's um, It's strong stuff. So yeah. If you're looking for a good PVA and you're sick of the old stuff, get some of this, it's decent.
Okay, so the PVA's on the ceiling. Got the water in the bucket ready to go. Now it's just time to get a mix on. Gotta get it on. So the PVA, just so you know, is tacky. It's tacky on the bonding. It's a very strong mix, as you can see. It's always nice because bonding is very porous. It'll literally suck the moisture out of the plaster. So when you plastering onto bonding, quick note, nice strong mix PVA. It'll keep it at bay. And then if you are beginning or starting out, at least you won't suck in as fast as it would without it. So yeah, I'm going to get a mix on, then I'm going to start plastering it. Let's do it. Alright, so now we're going to apply the first coat of plaster straight onto that first coat. We're just going to try and make sure we get around this curved ceiling of doom because it is it's a lot there's nothing straight about it basically so we're tying into this plasterboard ceiling here this is getting boxed in where the pipes are just don't have to worry about that Boiler area is getting boxed in as well, so I might just see that bit, but it's always nice to plaster it. So now you can see it's digging in on that side. I'm gonna have to come the other way. Make sure we don't get any lines in. The problem with old buildings, ceilings and walls are everywhere. Just get it as flat as you can. Obviously we've still got a second coat. So it's not the end of the world, but... So yeah, keep going with that. Start the other side. And that's it, we're just applying the first coat, make sure get it as flat as we can. So I'll crack on and come back in a minute. What I would say if you can is to aim to use the speed skin. It's the plastic ST Ox speed skin. And what this will do, the plaster will stop the moisture coming to the front. What happens sometimes when you plaster on top of bonding, it can leave air bubbles. This will immediately get rid of that. I mean, the wall ceilings are everywhere, but we'll give it a go. As you can see, it really does flatten the ceiling, especially on a ceiling that's, well, flat, <laughs> it's really good. So if you get a chance to use a speed skin, I definitely would give it a go. And especially when you're doing it on top of bonding, because it does help. Let's get a speed skim everywhere. That means once you've used it, you can go directly second coat onto it. It's perfect, it's a good old product. So that's what I recommend. Whack on the second coat. Bit of a nightmare, you've got to decide which way to go, but it's all good. Old houses, more trouble. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on.
Okay, so got the first and second coat on. Got a few done in there and that wall as well. Couldn't actually do this wall. You don't know what to do with circle window. Don't know whether to keep it or not, so we had to leave that. But the rest of what we could do is done. So that's first and second coat. Gonna again run um, the speed skim over it. Well, the patches in here probably. It's a bit iffy on that ceiling. And then we're gonna carry on going from there. But after that, the process is pretty much the same. But I'll show you um, how I flatten the ceiling and we'll go from there. Okay, so now I'm gonna flatten this ceiling. Just flatten the second coat. And then we've pretty much hit the nail on the head. That's it. From there, the process stayed the same. I'm just gonna give it a quick flatten, show you how I'll do it. Then we'll wrap up. Let's do it. What I'm doing is filling in the edges, just trying to get the plaster nice and flat. Obviously, we've got loads of time, it's just the first flatten, but the flatter you get it at this time, the better. So we're just filling in any low spots and then trying to get it nice and flat. Especially on the edges, you really want to work hard to make sure that they're filled in at this point. Okay, that's it. Flatten the second coat. Now we just carry on with the process. Just carry on as you would do a normal wall. And uh, what I will say, if you want to learn the full process of plastering, click the link below in the description. And yeah, that's an invite to join our welcome course. It's what we offer to anyone who's uh, starting plastering. Teach how to plaster a wall, how to mix the plaster perfectly so you can get it on, how to prepare your walls, and everything far and in between. So uh, yeah, feel free to join up to that. If you like this video, please like, leave any comments behind and uh, thank you so much. Hope you learned a few tips on using bonding, dealing with Artex and uh, generally dealing with dodgy ceilings. All right, thanks a lot. See you on the next one. Goodbye.